Hi everyone, welcome to my Autodesk screencast. My name is Zan Ta and I work for Repo Products in Smyrna, Georgia. I'm an Autodesk certified instructor and hold many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencasts, please search for VAR2015, that's V-A-R-2015, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. In today's screencast, we will be continuing a previous screencast regarding topography in Revit. Uh, here I am in Revit 2016. Uh, I have a building, generic building, and a topo surface already created. And what we're going to focus on today are some of the other tools that are available in the model site panel <clears throat> and the modify site panel of the Revit, of the ribbon. Uh, the first is site component. I can click this command to put in a site component, like for example, a tree. And you can just place it wherever you want to place it. One of the things you want to consider when you're working with um, components like this, if you look at the family, there is a feature that says always vertical. And that is usually checked. If you don't have it checked, what ends up happening is that the family will be used and it will go perpendicular to the plane that it's sitting on. If I look at this in 3D, you can see that the tree is going completely vertical, even though the site shows that it's angled like this. So if that feature is unchecked, this tree will not go straight up. It will go out perpendicular 90 degrees to the face of wherever you're touching. Let's go back to massing and site. You have parking component, so you can start that command and you can go in here and pick what you want to work with. If you don't have what you need, you can go to load uh, family, go to site, <clears throat> and there's a, a few folders that we can work with. They have parking and you have some objects that you can work with and load to use. You have accessories, logistics and utilities. And obviously at the end of the day you can always get more from seek.autodesk.com or other sites. And they work just like other families. You can click to um, use a spacebar if you need to rotate them. Okay? And you can just place them. You can obviously use like the copy command and uh, work with them accordingly. What other tools do we have? We have building pad. So the building pad command allows you to place a pad on the base of the building and eat into the topography. So I click building pad, it goes into sketch mode, and I can pick the outside edges of the walls that I want to work with to create the building pad. You will need to obviously use tools like uh, trim to corner, uh, you may need to flip the orientation of where the magenta line is supposed to be. You can also use the pick method instead of picking walls. And as long as you have one closed loop like this, you hit the green check mark and it builds the pad for you. <clears throat> if I were to take a section cut through this and go look at it in 3D or go look at that particular view, you'll see that the building pad is created. It eats into the building and the earth and everything is um, shown properly. In regards to the modify site panel, we have other tools that are available. For example, a split surface that allows you to select the surface that you're working with and split it, for example, like this. And so you have two separate topo surfaces and maybe this one will end up being a different material say water and double click it here it goes into the project <clears throat> and it looks like that if we switch it to realistic it looks like that merge surface does the exact opposite start the command and it'll ask you to select the primary surface to merge so I'll pick the dirt then I'll pick this one and what ends up happening is the second um, surface gets merged into the first and everything goes back to what it was before I did the split surface command. Subregion, uh, by the way when you're doing the split surface it's two separate surfaces. If you're doing a subregion command 
you are designating an area uh, to be a different finish, but it's not actually a different uh, surface. So for example, um, I'll just wood oak for instance. And if we look at it in 3D, you can see it looks like that. And then lastly, you have graded region command. This is where you have to use it to specify uh, cut and fill for the topo surface. And the way that functions is you want to make sure that your existing um, surface that you're working with has an existing phase um, construction. Okay. From there, you can go ahead and click graded region. And you can either create a new topo surface exactly like the one that you're working with or one that just has the perimeter points only. So I'm going to pick the first one for now. And then it'll say select the surface. So I'm going to select that surface. Um, and then from here, you have the ability to add or delete the topo surfaces or change the elevations so that you get the kind of grading that you need. Uh, lastly, you have label contour. And you can just click and drag and click. And it will put in the annotations for the measurements for the contour lines. And that's it. That's a quick uh, screencast video on model site and modify site panel of the uh, massing and site tab of the ribbon. Thanks for watching my screencast and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up.